Hey YouTube, I'm out here in Kings Valley, me and my pretty wife, she uh, doesn't want to be pretty on camera, so she'll hold the camera. Uh, I'm going to call this video Rapture uh, Pre-Trib Preppers, you know, not that I want to argue about pre-trib or anything, you know, I think it's fruitless to have debates about that sort of thing. Um, just believe what you believe, don't fight other Christians about it, and just uh, believe in the Lord. Um, but what we're doing out here is... I uh, when I moved from Ohio, I had to empty all these out, and what we're doing is we got this spring over here, Kings Valley. You like the name of that? We got this. Uh, we got this spring over here, free water. You know, it's uh, filtered by God Himself, and so I like that. And then, uh, yeah, we're just we're preparing because I've been watching plenty of videos. There's uh, some Jim Baker interviews with. Uh, uh, I forget the guy's name, but, you know, you have to consider the people in Japan that got hit by tsunamis and earthquakes, the people in Indonesia that got hit by tsunamis, uh, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Katrina, all this stuff, serious disasters. And Jesus said that there would be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And uh, I hear a car coming. Yeah, I was saying there's, um, you know, Jesus gave all these signs about the end times, you know, uh, all about natural disasters. And I don't think that it's foolish to be prepared. Yes, I believe in supernatural provision. I believe that there will be supernatural provision during the tribulation. But, you know, I'm also trusting God. So I don't think it's wrong to have some things set aside because then you can be the person that is the giver that provides to the unbeliever. And then you're the testimony. Then God can multiply what you have. You know, you can be the five loaves and two fish, and then he can feed the multitude with what you give. So we've been out here, and um, it's a pretty remote spot. There's not a lot of uh, people that have been coming by. And um, two bikers stopped by, and they're just local guys. Uh, I think one guy had a Harley. I don't know what the other one was, but he... The two guys, they came over, they talked for a little bit, and then they walked back off. They, you know, they're doing a little biker talk. But as I was sitting here thinking, I started getting a little skittish, like starting getting a little, like, anxious, like, you know, are these guys up to no good? And started quoting some scriptures, you know, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, I'll trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the devil, and nothing will by any means harm me. And I was kind of starting to get into fear a little bit. Then the Lord started talking to me. You know, hey, didn't that one biker say that he had back problems and he couldn't ride long haul? You know, so I felt like I was supposed to go pray for the guy. And me and my wife have uh, prayed for people before. If you watch the video about Melvin in Dallas, uh, Melvin got healed really fast and he was walking with a cane. So yeah, we were praying for Melvin down in Dallas and he got healed by Jesus like super quick. So... I know that my wife is down to lay hands on people. So I came up and I said, hey, I feel like the Lord's telling me to pray for this guy. Let's go talk to him. And we walked up and I just said, hey, uh, you know, have you had back problems? And I just started going into my story. I was like, I was in Iraq, almost got killed. I got delivered from alcohol, uh, you know, and because of that, I've seen people get healed. And the Lord has just trained me in how to pray for the sick. And as soon as we started talking Jesus, this guy started putting his helmet on, started putting his glove on, throw a leg over the bike. Like, you mentioned Jesus, it's time to go, you know. But the other guy, uh, he was still kind of hanging around. And as the one guy was like, well, this is my cue to leave, um, the other guy was like, you know, I asked him, hey, you got any issues? He said, yeah, I got a knee with arthritis in it. So we offered to pray for him, and he was accepting, and we prayed for him twice, and he was slowly putting on his helmet and slowly putting on his sunglasses, but you could tell that the conviction of the Holy Spirit was getting on him because he got real still, he got real quiet, and I'm just believing that that healing is going to manifest, and it's going to be a testimony to that guy, and it's going to rock his world. So, you know, if you want to scare away scary bikers, you just got to talk about Jesus. Just start witnessing to him, you know. You uh, you want to scare away telemarketers? Just talk about Jesus, you know.
Um, now, I'm not bragging on myself because I want to say that in recent months, I've been really struggling with a lot of things. Um, you know, getting too led by the flesh, you know, too interested in worldly things and not interested in godly things. And I don't say this as a point of boasting, but Jesus said, when you fast, um, you know, there's many things in the New Testament, even in the Old Testament, we're talking about fasting. And I have a video about fasting that has gotten plenty of views and um, a lot of people have benefited from it. But I want to say that if you have that struggle where you're having a lot of like worldly flesh overrunning your life and uh, you're just feeling condemned, you're feeling just kicked around and you feel like the devil is running your life. Um, the Lord actually spoke through several of my friends and said, you know, I feel like you've given up on God or I feel like you've uh, really kind of thrown in the towel or you've just kind of gone off track. And the Lord was very stern with me. But I just, out of desperation, out of fear of the Lord, you know, fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. I fasted. You know, not saying this as a point of pride or bragging. I'm saying this as a point of teaching. Um, I fasted for three, four days. And because of that, I was able to break out of that funk. And immediately after, um, you know, today, I was laying hands on somebody again. After fasting, it gave me the willingness to be obedient again. And, you know, I was able to lay hands on that guy. I was able to preach the gospel. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, again, I'm only saying this as a point of teaching. If you feel like you're struggling with the flesh, if you feel like you're struggling with the world, fasting is the only answer because it's supernatural. It defies the logic of the world. You know, how do you... How do you get stronger spiritually? By getting weaker physically. You know, you have to weaken the flesh so that the flesh can't fight back anymore. Does that make sense? Ready? They went. Dirty go? Ah. See, I'm trying to be all fancy. But, yeah, I'm ridiculous. My wife's laughing at me. That's why you guys watch the channel, right? Because I'm silly. So I just wanted to say, I'm not doing this as a point of pride. I'm just doing this as a teaching to help you that if you're struggling with the flesh, if you're struggling with worldliness, the key to strengthen spiritually, you have to weaken the flesh. You know, Paul said the very same thing. When I'm weak, he is strong. Um, you know, so the Lord, he doesn't give up on you. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. And when the uh, you know when the enemy seems to be living or winning in your life, the Lord isn't just going to walk away from you and let you just wander away and die spiritually. So again, the Lord was using people to call me back, and, you know, because I've gotten to a point of hard-heartedness, of apathy, because uh, you know I've been walking for seven years, and the world's getting darker and darker. more and more intense. Um, but the good news at the end of this is that this morning when I woke up after breaking the fast, I, um, the last thing that I read last night was John 15, you know, abide in the vine. If you don't abide in the vine, then you'll be withered and you'll be, you know, cut off and cast into the fire. And I was like, no way, that's not for me. But he says that if you abide in me, if you abide in the vine, you can do nothing unless you abide in me. I was like, you know what? I don't care what's going on. I got to get back on track because I see the sign of the time. And this morning, when I woke up after breaking the fast, I need to read this. I read Hebrews 12. And it's all about how a good father rebukes and chastens his children, and that he does it because he loves them. It may not be comfortable for you, but it's good for you. you know? And that was a very encouraging word because it's telling me that I'm a 
the son, you know, which I should have known in the first place, you know, the devil's a liar and he will focus on your weaknesses and he will lie to you where if he can't stop you from getting saved, he'll stop you from being saved. But, you know, Hebrews 12 is what I woke up to this morning and, you know, ask the Lord to correct me. Ask the Lord to rebuke and chasten me because it says that he rebuked and chastened the land of love. So, just trying to be encouraging, trying to be edifying teaching and um, you know I don't think it's harmful to be prepared because consider this even if you go in the rapture you're leaving provision for somebody else if there is no rapture you have provision for yourself you know so don't fight your brother and sister don't be a cannibal Christian and chew up other people because the Bible also says a lot about you know the bite uh, sorry division uh, fruitless debate Love your neighbor as yourself. You want somebody jumping on your neck and trying to be right just to, you know, because they got pride. You know, be prepared for any situation. Be close to the Lord. Be prepared for rapture. And, uh, you know, if that doesn't happen for whatever reason, you know, I don't claim to know when the rapture is. Be prepared for either to be a provider for others, provide for your family, you know, because there's going to be lost left behind. Or they're going to be whatever. But I believe the Lord is coming. There's many scriptures that say that. Uh, read Isaiah 26. You know, that's Old Testament rapture. But you guys are great. Um, just uh, don't give up. Do the things I said if you're struggling with that. And God bless.